Welcome to Samutsari, Conversations with Mimi, a weekly podcast by Dinosocial, also a member of the Guerrilla Podcast Syndicate. Samutsari is where we can show that ordinary people do extraordinary things. Tune in to be entertained and to learn something new with your host, Mimi Lorilla. Hello and welcome to Samutsari, Conversations with Mimi. This is your host, Mimi Lorilla. And you are in a podcast featuring hot topics and other topics of interest for men and women alike. We also feature guests who share their passion and commitment to their profession or talents. And here at Samutsari, we share stories to inspire you, stories from ordinary people who make extraordinary things. And in today's episode, we have a comeback guest, which I promise that she's going to be back. And she's going to be something like semi-regular, depending on <laughs> her availability. So I'd like to welcome into today's show, Miss Anna De Guzman. Hi, Anna, and welcome back. Yeah, hi, everyone. Hi, Mimi. Thanks for having me back. As always, it's a pleasure. And, you know, um, I always look forward to our next episode. And I believe that today's episode will be a very interesting one. Yes. Because it's something that everyone can relate to. <laughs> yes. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the subject of who got <laughs> So Anna and yeah, I decided yeah. that uh, we will talk about Hugot and maybe Hugot is not familiar with a lot of people. So we'll try to unpack Hugot today. We'll try to talk about situations where there is this concept of Hugot, when and where it happens. And maybe we'll talk about the psychology of Hugot. Why are we Filipinos so entrenched in this Hugot? So maybe Anna, in your own layman's language what for you is hugot well you know if if i will try to dissect hugot of course it's a verb no i think it's it's a, a sentiment that is rooted from a certain emotion based on experience maybe good maybe bad mm -hmm. that's right mm. uh, that's uh, that's so straightforward <laughs> but, <laughs> but if we look at the etymology or the origins of hugot i think who got literally literally means to pull, to pull yes. or extract from something, yeah. But mm -hmm. the meaning has kind of morphed into some other, I don't know, some other place. I mean, it 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 went from the literal meaning to pull, um, and now it's as you said associated with emotions, associated with um, an experience which I want us to talk about. So what, what in your opinion, is the context of Hugot? Where is this coming from? And when <laughs> do people experience Hugot? Uh, you know what? Uh, I believe Hugot is something that, you know, I, I was telling you a while ago, aren't we too old for Hugot? But then, come to think about it, Hugot is something that we experience also as mm. young, uh, young people, right? Uh, we call them by another name, if I'm not mistaken. Back then, I think we call them meta message, meta forms, ah, etc., etc. Right? Yes. Um, I think uh, we say this as a means of, you know, saying something indirectly with a pinch of humor, right? With some hum um, underpinnings of humor. But then, you know how we Filipinos are. We cannot feel, but. We cannot be direct with what we are saying, especially if it's something that is has too too much emotional attachment, or we feel might offend another person, right? So we do the indirect route of trying to uh, express ourselves. So in this way, who got right? Mm -hmm. But here, uh, as as far as I know, who got is a is a sentiment of somebody who was broken hearted. And he tries, right, um, through lines which uh, mirror such emotions, but in a humoristic way. <laughs> uh, example would be, Buti pa pa masahe may sukule, pero ako sobro sobra binigay ko, pero wala akong nakuha pa balik. Para ganon, I can't help but laugh at that. I didn't mean to be, what do you call that, insensitive to the situation of the person. I'm happy you laughed. I'm happy you laughed. <laughs> because, you know, it, that Hugot... It means it hits a chord. Yes, it hits a chord. It hits a chord. You're right. 
So when a person um, utters those lines, those hugot lines, it probably means, um, as you said, there are layers of uh, of the messages there, yes. right? So something yes, that yes, could be literal, yes. something that could allude to something else, something that yes, borders yes. along the the irony of it all. Um, so mm. it's a very interesting. It, it, because we are language teachers, we have a language teaching background. It's a very interesting area yes. of study. If you want mm. to um, to dissect mm. it, like you said, to dissect it even further. But uh, yes, let's not yes. go to the linguistic aspect. <laughs> enough, enough. I want to talk. Although about, that's another interesting topic, huh? I know, I know. So I think I want to talk about um, the influence of media. That's why we probably have those who go. Do you believe or do you agree that? Filipinos that love telenovelas, that love dramas, that love the underdog mentality is what makes who got lines very appealing to, to us and therefore we become creative with it. Don't you think that we are so influenced by the media in our lives that we over romanticize everything? Well, you know how Filipinos are, Mimi. We are overly romantic. Uh, even in times of uh, like trouble or uh, like the pandemic we're having right now, we still are able to romanticize things. Mm. So especially with our exposure exposure to media like movies, like net Netflix, social media, and all that, you know we have come up or we have come up with uh, we have been rather influenced by what we watch on um, telenovelas, yeah. movies, right? And this is where we get the hugot lines from. As a matter of fact, I read in an article somewhere, and I believe I shared this with you, that a lot of the hugot lines we had before, or which were the original ones, came from lines from movies, right? Yes, uh, lines from movies, that's right. <laughs> yes, yes. So, we, I believe we are influenced a lot by what we watch on TV or in, on, in movies, right? In social media, in what we read. In what we yeah. read, right? If you still, do you still read novels? I remember, <laughs> I remember having an entire bookshelf of novels, and I would remember my favorite lines really well. So I guess Hugot is an influence from various uh, forms of media, especially now, like movies mm -hmm. and uh, social media. Mm -hmm. I would like to read one Hugot that I researched online. It's from um, wow. the movie of um, John Lloyd Cruz. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Because he's the king of <laughs> drama. <laughs> so according to this, um, according to this Hugot line from one of uh, John Lloyd's uh -huh. movies, he, he and I quote: "This is a quote. She loved okay. me at my worst. Oh you my had gosh. me at my best. But binali wala mo lang ang lahat, and you chose to break my heart. Kasi sa totoo lang, oh umaasa pa rin ako na sana ako pa rin na ako na lang ulit." So I think this is from a movie by John Lloyd and Bea Alonzo. You know, yeah, Bea Alonso, I've watched right, some right. of their movies, even John Lloyd and uh, Sarah. Sarah Heronimo, I watched that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think the appeal is universal. It doesn't matter what age we are. As long as we, um, you know, uh, listen to those lines and we remember those lines, that means it really resonates a lot to us, don't you think? Oh, yes, yes. And, you know, from the uh, term hugot itself, I'm sure we were already married by the time we saw that uh, that John Lloyd Bea Alonso movie, right? Mm. But still, we, we, when we heard those lines, it resonates, right, on our end because we simply have, you know, uh, experienced similar situations. It may not be directly for our for our own personal experience. Maybe it, it's our friend's personal experience. So, parang, it triggers a similar emotion or a familiar emotion like, Oh, oh well, no, I remember that. Kaya you have that kilig or feels moment. Mm -hmm. Kaya nakakatuwa yung hugot. Nakakatuwa yung hugot. Kasi it triggers uh, emotions which you may rarely um, uh, experience or it's fun to go back to that certain emotion that you felt uh, a long time ago. On That's our end, right. I'm talking about our end. <laughs> what about who got in within a song? Have you um, listened to any songs that really clearly cry yes. out some Hugot lines? Oh my gosh. How, where do I begin? 
uh, for example, the company. I'm sure you oh, know yes, the company. Our the Pinoy company. listeners are familiar with the company, right? Yung pakisabi na lang na mahal ko siya. Yes. At tinapalimang. <laughs> Diyos ko, forever martyr. Forever the friend, never the girlfriend. <laughs> yes, I've known you for so long. You are a friend yes, of mine. Yes, you know my story. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Oh my gosh, you're bringing out my 20-year-old self. <laughs> oh, diba? So, I think it's really good for us to talk about this. I think Hugot does not only um, encompass the heartache, heartbreak, love, angle of that. Maybe Hugot can also mean sacrifice. For example, uh, when a lot of Filipinos uh, go to, I don't know, maybe Dubai or Hong Kong, become an OFW anywhere all over the world and then they choose to leave their families behind in search for a better life, in search for a better future. The the who good lines are are really about sacrifice and about yes. um, family. you know the longing for the family but they couldn't do it because they have to look after other people and not their own mm. family. So what can you say about situations where who good is really um, deeply rooted in family values? I guess, I guess hugot is really stemming from various emotions. It's not just romantic. It's not just linked, or it can it it cannot be linked to just romantic feelings or emotions. Uh, as a matter of fact, a lot of uh, hugot lines have now evolved from movie lines, famous lines from songs to um, everyday emotions that we experience as parents, as OFWs. Uh, ano ba yung pwede natin isipin for OFWs? Example is, um, akala nila ang pera napupulot lang sa, sa, sa puno. Ang hindi nila alam, ang pera pinagpapawisan at pinag, pinaghihirapan ko ng gusto. Pero kung gasto si nila, akala mo bumubunga lang sa puno. Diba? <laughs> Parang right. ganun. <laughs> Like money doesn't really grow on trees. Does it? No? Yeah, it doesn't really grow on trees, right? But you know, these are sentiments that you know that are echoed by various Pugot lines. Um, there's even one that is from the movie G- General Luna. Have you seen that movie? No, I think I have, but I, but you can uh, jog my memory in terms of the Pugot lines. And there was there was an. Uh, a scene there where Epikison, I think he was Ap- Apolinario Mabini. Was he Apolinario? I can't recall. Oh, yes, but, yes, yes, yes. Apolinario. Okay, he was Apolinario Mabini. He was asked by somebody, uh, how do you deal with the temper of General Luna? Because, you know, that character General Luna is somebody who's very hot-tempered, yes. authoritative, etc. And what Epi, I remember Epi saying is, um, Naghabul ka na ba sa hangin? So oh, have you chased good. after the wind? Right. So um, it's an answer to a question, right? It's a it's actually a question. It's meant to be an answer to another question. So how do you deal with General Luna's temper? And he said, "Nakapaghabul ka na ba ng hangin?" So it's like saying it's a futile effort mm. because he's he's going to be like that. He's never gonna change. Mm. I cannot do anything about him. Right? Yeah. So, those are hugot lines as well. So, so, metaphors. Yes. So, what do you think? If you are not a Filipino, will you get these hugot lines? Or is it really just unique to us and the way we express ourselves? We we immediately get it. Um, for a non-Filipino, they might, not, they might struggle a little bit and it will take you triple or quadruple the effort to explain what it is. What's your take on that? I think with Westerners or with Western culture, since they're more direct, they, I think they will have a harder time, you know, trying to to decipher the message behind a hugot line. Yeah, I, I'm sure there's another term for hugot line in, you know, uh, Western culture, right? Um, maybe memes or what, but, uh, uh, but, you know, since their culture is more direct, you know, I think, and, we Asians are more indirect with our emotions or feelings. I think Asians have an easier understanding of hugot lines. Mm. 
yeah. than our Western so. guards counterparts. They need to stay in the Philippines and be indoctrinated oh, yes. in a way we do this <laughs> in order for them to understand. Oh yes. Mm. I mean you 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 live in Australia. I'm sure you understand and you know what I mean. I, if you were to say something which is a meta message, which is a means of I mean euphemism. I believe it's called a euphemism. Euphemism, right? yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. considered as a euphemism. Yes. Yeah. So it's in the direct way or polite way of being rude actually. Yes. <laughs> I think yes. And you know to what? a certain degree. Mm-hmm. I was searching online again and I found this blog uh-huh. um uh-huh. about um who got lines in a financial uh scenario. Oh really? So it's oh, not just the love angle like I said. For example, binigay ko na ang lahat pero kulang pa rin. It's the way you give oh, it your yeah. all to save yeah. your money, to eliminate the debt you have, and you've given yeah. it all, but it's still not enough. <laughs> I really find that it's true. So it's true. Funny. It's and true. And then this this one, I had you, then I lost you, and I'll never forgive yourself. So if you deprive yourself of cash or you lost your money, so that is another, you know, kind of like a deep deep rooted regret, and then. Mm-hmm. Um, there is another one here. I remember that night and I'll regret it for the rest of my days. Probably <laughs> <laughs> when you purchased something, high ticket item, and uh, right, right, realize right. the next day you don't really need it and you just spent your money. You tend to regret. So, right? yeah, so it's too late. So, <laughs> really, the Who Good Lines, you, you can invent your own Who Good Line and you can. And there's a lot. Yeah, you can obviously mm. apply that in any context or, or scenario and uh, yeah. that's the beauty of our language um, that we can be very creative uh, creative and very um, colorful in the way we use our language don't you think so yes 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 and it's a very creative way of expressing oneself indirectly right or expressing one's emotion in a way that would come out to be you uh, with a sense of humor and as an underpinning or you know as something that would come out funny when in fact it has deep and very painful uh, mm-hmm. emotional um, pain behind it all right mm-hmm. so it's a very creative way of expressing oneself really i mean mm-hmm. imagine you have cited uh who got from an economic uh basis uh from movies uh, so there can be a lot Right, there can be a lot of origins for who would lines. Actually, mm-hmm. I, I saw this other one. Uh, buti pa ang math major, parati na lang nagahanap ng X value ng X. <laughs> <laughs> oh my right? god! And 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 mind you, even on Facebook, there are also groups dedicated to um, exploring what these who good lines are. For, but oh, this really? is not this is not mm-hmm. just uh who got per se but uh, there's a facebook facebook group on people who have loved and lost so the people who are probably um divorced or annulled uh, but these are filipino facebook groups or oh, really? people who are That's just simply separated from their um their previous partners and um, I bet you that these groups, uh, b- because they're looking for love, obviously, they're looking for companionship, they're looking for somebody to, to take them on board as they are, and looking to yeah. start a new. I'm pretty sure 100% that Facebook group is flooded with lots of those who got lines. And then you just pick and choose the one that can relate to you, and probably <laughs> yes, that's, that's yes. how you will um, you know, make connections. Yes, and it's it's, it's it's yes, and it's it's a it's a creative way of you know as I've said sharing one's emotion and also uh, having this sense of camaraderie camarad- camaraderie and um, belongingness to a certain group of people who may have experienced something similar to what you have experienced maybe love life wise or a financial financially speaking or in terms of your experience with family right so mm. i think I'll, I'll visit that facebook group page i i have i haven't encountered that facebook group <laughs> okay the, so you, I you think have, if you have enough time and you have the energy you cannot sleep at night yes i encourage <laughs> you to check out those groups i, I, I will i bet I will. you i bet you because i've seen it in one tv show where they introduced that group so 
I really was also so pleasantly surprised that such groups exist. So you would, it's like that Tinder would, but not Tinder. <laughs> oh, I think that would be an interesting uh, avenue to explore. Although I'm not, I'm not divorced or separated. Thank God we're not. But then it's interesting to know what what expressions do they have on there and in terms of who good nights, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think I. Let's do a little bit yes. of predicting. Okay, so, what okay. do you think? What do you think is the future of Google? What do you think is the pathway to this uh, social or sociological ideology, if we if we want to call it like that, or um, a very widely spread pop culture kind of thinking? I think Hugot will always be there, Mimi, uh, for as long as you know we. We want to express ourselves in a creative way, in an indirect manner, in a way that you know will find humor in a hurtful experience. It will always be there. I think maybe we can call it by another name because I remember back then during our time we used to call it meta message. Do you remember we used to call it meta message? And men would always be wondering what does she mean when she's saying yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> they could not even figure it out. So like it's a yes, my... a yes, or a yes, a no. Or yes, a yes, precisely, a maybe. precisely. Mm. So like when I when I prepare myself an hour before you know I go out on a date with my with my husband and I ask, and you know I'm expecting him to say, "Wow, you look ravishing," and he just says, "Let's go," and I say, "Okay," and then all of a sudden I'm not really talking to him, and he's wondering what happened. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> everything everything's okay because he said okay, and then I lost her from there. <laughs> exactly. Right? I mean, it we just, need to write it, a book about that. Uh, oh, it's I like, guess it's it's no longer the men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Book. Yes, probably like uh, I don't know which planets are we going to use. Ah, uh, uh, me book. Eba, <laughs> Pugot me Eba, guess me Adan. <laughs> oh, diva. <laughs> Why not? Yes, yeah, something that, that could be my effect, next book project. Right? That could be oh, my next book project. That would be very interesting, right? And I can co-author that with you any day. Oh yes, and men need that, that in their lives. Men need that in their lives. You know, men when women say okay, it means say you're in big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> that is really a good study, and now you know you've given me an idea, and I, I probably will really pursue that. Maybe after the um, situation with COVID-19 uh, becomes yeah, yeah. Uh, better, so we don't have to worry about, you know, the new normal once it has been semi-defined and we can adapt our our movements, you know, our professional yeah. and personal movements, then we can obviously, um, you know, have a serious talk or conversation about this potential project. Yeah, I think one way we could do this, just to give you an idea of how we could go about it, is like we could say, when a woman says this, what is your interpretation? So, but it's open-ended. You don't let them choose, right? So we yes. come up with themes for their interpretation. And that would be a very good book. I think that would be a bestseller. Uh, oh, let's, do you for it. <laughs> let's, let's claim it. Let's claim it. And, um, yes, it's in the bag. It's in the yes, bag. and we can also do a proper study, like get people's opinions and and yes, incorporate yes, yes. that into the book. So it's yes, it's not just yes. our opinions, but it's a factual. Um, it has a yes. factual basis as well, and it's got to yes. be exciting. And since you are teaching, we can use some of your students to do a small study. Oh, for of course. Gather the data for us, and mm. all we need to do is put it together. I think that yes, will be I'm very sure that would be very feasible. <laughs> yeah. So we'll we'll have a who got theme book there coming. I'm so excited already, and I couldn't believe oh, that. Same here, huh? <laughs> Something about that already gives us um, a future to, to, to do a future ideas, project to do. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Anna, I, I think um, if you don't have anything else to add uh, to who got, what is your key takeaway, or what is key advice, or what is uh, one thing about who got that you would like to impart our to our audience? You know, one time I I was wanting to write this in Facebook. Like, if I could say something to my younger self, what would it be? Um, it would be, you're more than enough. Because back then, when my when I would 
you know, encounter men who I felt were also interested in me, but nothing came out of those relationships. I felt it very inadequate. So I have those hubot lines, right? That I would you remember Julia Roberts in the movie My Best Friend's Wedding? Yes, take I me, watched that movie. Take me in. And then when they when, when there was this scene between her and Cameron Diaz, Cameron Diaz was like saying, Why, why, why does he like you? Why not me? Because I'm jello and you're creme brulee. Something to that effect, right? So mm-hmm. I don't know, am I jello or maybe I'm creme brulee? <laughs> so, um, you know, I would, I would say who got lines as an indirect way of expressing myself, you know? Uh, even to my husband, I think if I ask him right now, I don't know where he is. Is he here? No, he's not. It would be interesting for, for me to ask him. If I say, if I said this to you back then, how would you interpret it? Ah, because if yes. I, yeah. Buti pa, buti pa ang buti pa ang hindi friend na babae nagiging girlfriend pero ang friend na babae friend lang for life parang ganon okay pero hindi niya ibig sabihin hindi niya alam sa akin ba yun hindi niya tatanungin sa akin magkaano yun <laughs> he would ask what do you mean by that right yes. so I would so most of the time they're clueless or maybe they're not as oh, sensitive as us <laughs> I mean they will be forever clueless I'm telling you even how many years of marriage they will always be clueless right so going back, I think, yeah, I would always tell myself you're more than enough. I would also yes. tell my daughter if she experiences, uh, you know, uh, e- events met with the romantic or failures, she cannot just say, I'm, I guess I'm inadequate. Because, you know, you're more than enough. Maybe it's not the time. Right? right. So yeah. we, ha- know, we have the right love at the wrong time. <laughs> We had the right love at the wrong time. <laughs> That's also a very nice hook. Like, if we have a, a millennial <laughs> listening to us, I'm so sorry. Uh, that You know, it shows our era. <laughs> <laughs> I just told my oh, husband the other day that the theme song when we were probably younger uh, was this song that my daughter and I sang, which is the, the Kita Kita theme song like two less lonely people in the world oh yeah i yeah, think yeah, i think yeah. that's that's who we were before because we i feel like um we were against all odds oh see that's oh, another yes. title of <laughs> so yeah really, against this all odds. this topic allows us to reminisce our past and and appreciate and our, our old selves yeah. yes yes yeah. yes i i like your i like your advice to your 20 year old self and and if I were to give advice right now, I, I would I would tell people to let it go. I mean, if you have a whole good mind or if you are really uh, experiencing something emotional and you would like to express it in whatever form you wish, maybe through a song, through a whole good line, uh, through just letting it all out. But if you want to cry, cry. Uh, you just have to be your authentic self, you know. You just have to yeah. express yourself. Don't uh, hold it in and don't just keep it to yourself uh, because it's not good for your mental health and it's not good uh, if you just keep it within yourself and not yeah, share it at least so with somebody true. that you um, you trust uh, a lot uh, just to confide in that whoever it is a person family member friend um, yes I don't know what do you think you know I, I, I was in that stage unfortunately <laughs> In, uh, during my younger years, I would always want to please people. So, in the process of, you know, having to please them, I lost touch of who I was really. And it's sad. It's sad. You should have your own self-identity at an early age. You should know who you are. And, you know, mm-hmm. you should not be afraid to to disappoint people because that's you. If they cannot take you as you are, then, you know, that's not the path we are supposed to take. Somewhere down the road, oh, ito na naman, good line na naman. <laughs> somewhere, down, somewhere down the road, there should be, you know, a meeting of the minds because you could never, you, you could never, you cannot always compromise, right? Yes, you cannot yes. always compromise. You should always be true to yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so I my think take that's, on it. Yeah, I think that's the essence of who God no? You're just, trying to be true to yourself and um, whether or not the language is direct or indirect or trying to be euphemistic uh, the important thing is that we are in touch with our feelings so um, 
Yeah, Anna, I, I'm really enjoying. I'm enjoying our talk. So this definitely needs a part Same here. a part four, a part five. Why? Sure, why not? In, between, in a book, ha? In a book. So, so, in a book, uh, we'll we'll definitely. It's the finale, huh? I'm serious about that. I'm I'm, I'm going to. Oh, same um, here. Same here. I'm going to uh, continue working on that project with you, and we are publicly declaring it in my podcast. <laughs> 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 so, so we have to be accountable. We have Please to support follow that, through. Please support that, huh? We will, we have we to will, follow we through. Uh, we have to yeah, start looking will. for uh, Philippine publishers who will um, take on board um, that uh, project. But we have to write it first. So anyway, Anna, I think who got like what you said is um, something, a concept, um, a mindset, a concept or a mindset or an expression, a creative expression that uh, Filipinos have. And because we are very creative people i think it will really stay it's a cultural thing um lucky that we did have hugot otherwise there's there's no avenue for us to express our emotions and uh, we've talked about how right, right, we can right. um, put that in different contexts so mm-hmm. um i wish to thank you again for um being on my show today i'm very very my happy pleasure. that you're available uh you shared your wisdom you shared oh, your insights you. in, and your expertise <laughs> in the <laughs> course of our era. In the course of our era. And uh, y- you are right. We, we The purpose of us talking about that is to connect with the millennials and give them also a piece of our, our um, you know, the of our time. A piece of our time because nowadays it's so different. So um, to the audience, I hope you guys liked um, our show today and... Um, uh, I'm I'm with Anna, and this has become a, be- uh, a a better version of what it could have been if I discussed it on my own. That's why I always like having to interact with people. So if you have any stories or topics you wish to feature in the show, you wish to feature in the show, please reach out to me at my email mimi at dinosocial dot com. And thank you uh, to Guerrilla Podcast Syndicate. Samut Sari is a member of the Guerrilla Podcast Syndicate. And please do not forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and to my podcast and Anna our our, our project is already in the bag I'll see you it next is. time thank you for coming look forward to that thank you for having me again yes and this is Mimi Loria saying goodbye Anna let's wave um, goodbye to our um, guests I mean to our audience for today and we'll see you in the next thanks podcast. for listening bye everyone thank you for having me bye If you find value in this episode, make sure you like and subscribe to be notified of new releases. If you have any questions or suggestions, please reach out to Gorilla Podcast or send us an email at mimi at dinosocial.com. Spread the word and don't forget to tune in next time.